Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Regular viewers will know I review many video photographic and audio related products. Well today I'm really excited to announce I've purchased the Atomos Ninja 5 which is the very latest Atomos uh, field recorder stroke monitor and here it is. Now I've only had this a few days so I'm still getting to grips with what it can do. Um, there really isn't anything it can't do but this is basically the um, it's gone into black and white mode. There we go. The uh, Atomos Ninja 5. And as you can see here, it's got various display modes while you're actually recording an image. Um, you can actually adjust everything while it's actually recorded. And I'm really excited about that because there's many times when you're out on location, you want to be able to check the focus, check the exposure, um, but you don't want to stop the recording. Obviously, if you're doing an interview or whatever, or something that can't be... Um, you know, you can't do a take two on. You want to be able to make fine tune adjustments while you're actually filming. And with this monitor, everything's live. Everything's available to you while you're actually filming. You can tell you're recording. There's a red telly light around the actual uh, screen. And you can see that quite clearly on there that it is recording. Um, also, which is really clever, they've put a tally light on the reverse of the actual recorder. So... You can actually see that it's recording um, on the back. So either if you're the camera person and the talent or whatever is looking at the monitor, you can see that it's recording. Likewise, if it's the other way round um, and you're monitoring it from this side, you can see it's recording and the talent can as well. Um, I haven't looked in the menu. If you can turn that off, I guess you can, the, the back one, because uh, sometimes you don't want the talent to know, I guess. But... Um, it's a five inch recorder. It's the very first five inch recorder from Atomos. Uh, the other Atomos recorders uh, are either like the Atomos Ninja Blade and the Ninja 2, which are only HD recorders. They're smaller than five inch. Um, but the pro end ones, the 4K recorders, are all seven inch recorders. I've actually got my Atomos Shogun connected to my uh, Fuji X-T3. And that's recording uh, what we're doing now. But that's a seven inch recorder. That's quite a bit bigger. That's a lot bigger. And I'll do a cutaway so you can compare the size differences. Um, this recorder is a um, five inch display. Um, it's actually a fantastic display. It's a thousand nit display. Now in real terms, that means it's really bright. So you can actually view it in daylight if you're outdoors or whatever. Um, to give you a comparison, most of the top end monitors, um, even at this price point, are around about 500 nit, even four, between four and 500 nit. So this has basically got twice the uh, brightness and contrast of what other conventional monitors have. So it's ideal for outdoor recording. Um, along the bottom here, you've got all your focus assist and exposure assist uh, functions that you would ever want in a, uh, in a recorder of this nature. So for example, you've got uh, that's uh, focus peaking. So you can clearly see, well, you won't be able to clearly see, but you can clearly see what's in focus. So if I look straight into this uh, camera now, um, you may be able to see, if I've got the monitor in the right place, you may be able to see a red outline around my glasses, around my face. So you actually can see that it's in focus. So that's, that's a great feature. It's got um, zebras. Now, the zebras work really well. Obviously, as you adjust the exposure, find the aperture ring. You can see the zebras are showing my forehead is blown right out. Uh, can you see that? The zebras are showing my forehead blown right out. That's about the right exposure. And when you look at the video, um, I'll cut to this shot that I'm changing so you can clearly see what it's doing. Um, overexposed, underexposed. Now, some people might not want to go by the zebras in an indoor environment like this. I would probably want to use false color. So um, we would switch on false color, which is an awesome feature. Every monitor should have this. So you can see my forehead's gray. Well, gray is pretty much uh, a good exposure. So um, you can see they're red. Um, anything going red and orange, sort of in this corner here, is overexposed. Well, it would be because it's me blinds behind me. It's the light behind me. Um, now my forehead has gone underexposed a bit. So 
Actually, no, sorry, the other way around. The forehead is blowing right out. That's well overexposed. So I would say about there will give me, you know, um, a pretty good exposure. And we'll see on the actual video whether that is the case. And you can then turn that off. Um, black and white, as you can see. Um, and it's got different aspect ratios. And also you can zoom in. So um, it's got, uh, I'm not sure where that function is actually, but you can zoom in onto the display. So you get your, your perfect focus. Um, as I say, I've got to go through this menu. So I'll fathom out where all the different functions are. Um, waveform. I know a lot of um, videographers use waveforms to determine the correct exposure. And as you can see here, now you can make this waveform size uh, in the small, uh, in the corner, larger, whatever. And then uh, you just tap that display to get rid of it. So, um, you know, everything, Atomos have put everything into this to make it a viable monitor for pros to use, just for monitoring the image. Forget that it's actually a, a recorder. Um, but right, let's get back to the recorders. We, we know that the display will, will do everything for you. The recorder records in two types of codecs. It's got the Apple ProRes codec, and there's various flavors of uh, ProRes. It's got ProRes 422, HQ, um, LT, and what have you. I've got this set to ProRes 422. Um, and that's fine for what I'm doing, but you can set it to ProRes HQ. Um, it's also got the Avid DNX or DX uh, built into it. So if you're an Avid editor, it'll record in that format. So, you know, you've got a mega high quality recorder. The, the other great, great thing with this recorder, and I do believe the Atomos Shogun is exactly the same, but if the camera outputs via its HDMI port, the uh, 422 signal and a lot of the new cameras, well not a lot, some of the new cameras, for example the Fuji X-T3 can output, if you set it, it will output 4K 10-bit 422, not 420. Um, and there's a big difference if you're doing colour grading or you're doing green screen or something of that nature, it's a very useful um, colour depth uh, codec, well not codec, um, you know, to output. Well, these recorders will accept that signal and record in 10-bit 422. So you're getting amazing quality. And the quality from these recorders does exceed the quality that you'll get from uh, what's being recorded internally on an SD card because of the compression. The, comp the, the ProRes compression is far, far better um, than the compressions in the uh, cameras, although they're fine, you know, they're pretty good, but they're not as good as what you'll get with these. Um, I also got your audio level meters. It has got an analog input. I'll go through the inputs as well, actually. But um, so it's got a great recorder. It records onto standard SSD, standard uh, SSD, SSD drives, the little two and a half inch, um, either uh, solid state drives, yeah, the SSD drives, um, which plug straight into a caddy, which Atomos supply, I've got lots of caddies actually, but slot into the back here. Um, these actually jut out, you can see this caddy's jutting out a bit. They are actually manufacturing a smaller caddy. I guess the drive is smaller as well, I'm not so sure of the technical specs, but that will, that will fit in there flush, but I'm, I'm not bothered about the, in fact the caddy sticking out protects the HDMI port somewhat so you know that in itself I think is absolutely fine. I've got a 500 gig drive in this one so that's given me about an hour and a half in ProRes 422. Um, it's a standard Sony NF batteries, um, MP whatever they are I don't know but everyone's got them. Um, a very standard Sony battery on the back there. This size battery will last for ages, a couple of hours, two or three hours, something like that. And then you can get the bigger batteries that will last even longer. Um, and it's got screw threads on the bottom and the top for mounting on a tripod, a gimbal, um, a cage or, or whatever. Now, um, on this side, I mean, I've got to hold this little, sort of carefully because I've got a, a recording signal going into it. Um, on this side, you've got your headphone jack for monitoring your audio, um, which I'll unplug for now. Um, 
and you've got uh, mic line inputs. So you've got analog input should you need it. I've actually uh, taken the sound from the HDMI, so I'm quite happy with the sound coming um, via the camera. Um, and then you've got obviously your monitor on the front here. So um, on off switch is on that side as well. So you've got on off switch headphone, mic line input on that side. Um, and then on that side, you've got your, uh, I can never tell how I'm holding this when I'm doing these reviews because um, I've got four cameras set up. So I don't know if I've got me higher, lower or whatever, but I can see there, that's, that's about right. So you've got your HDMI in and HDMI out on this side. So it has got HDMI uh, um, throughput. Um, so, I mean, that's basically the uh, Atomos Ninja 5. It's a compact version, nicely made. I think it's aluminium, I don't know. Um, but it's really, really nicely made. It's a better construction than the Atomos Ninja, uh, Ninja Flame, the Shogun, and their previous um, seven inch monitors. Although I'm, I've been very happy with them, to be honest, you know what I mean? Um, but this uh, is a nicely made piece of kit. It has got a built in fan. And I know um, there has been, you know, a number of people online saying it's a bit noisy, but I think that's a load of nonsense. I really do think that's a load of nonsense. Who on earth is gonna use a monitor like this with a microphone right by it? If you're vlogging and you've got this on the camera, you know, so you've got this mounted on the camera like so next to a microphone, fair, you know, fair dunkum. It might, you know, you might, but I think that's really, I think the fan's pretty quiet. Yeah, that's, um, I don't think that's that noisy. Oh, regarding the display, you can, remove all the obstructions so you can actually clearly see the image on the display which is great and um, if i look straight into the camera um, yeah you can see i think that exposure is pretty good but as i say it's, it's ever so easy to check focus um your waveforms vector scopes um oh crikey you just got um rgb parade you know um i, I don't know what isn't on this monitor to get the correct audio levels you can see your audio levels up there that's what i love about it it's it's just got everything you know uh, and you can actually zoom in you can zoom in to check focus um i'm not sure where that is at the moment oh is that it oh here we go yeah so um you can zoom in to check the focus and you can move the image around let's get rid of that so you can move the image around. So obviously I'm gonna be sure that I'm focused on my eyes there. And you've got two levels, so that's times two. And you've got a times one, I think. Um, one to two. But, oh yeah, just different, there is different. Oh, that's, that's aspect, aspect, aspect ratios. Um, so where did I find that? It's along here somewhere I found. Oh yeah, there we go. So that's times one, so it's all along here. You've got all your menus just along the bottom here. So it's absolutely tremendous. I can pretty much clear this in. If you use that in conjunction with focus peaking, look at that. That is absolutely knob on. Well, yeah, yeah, my eyebrows are completely in focus there. I'm really, really pleased with how that's working. Um, you can clearly see that. And then you can take that off. Obviously, you can move the focus point where you want, but obviously that'd be on me. Um, and then back to back to that. So yeah, um, great, great piece of kit. Um, I'm actually got this connected today to my Fuji XT2, and I've not used this for filming yet. So this is a, a good test for the Atmos Ninja Five, the XT2, and for the sound. I've got connected my Tascam DR70. Again, I've not used that yet. This is the first recording I'm doing on that. It looks like the levels are fine. The levels are looking fine on here as well. So um, the, the test I'd done earlier, the levels were really distorted. So I'm hoping they're not distorted now, but that looks pretty good. Let me take focus, I can clear, clearly see focus peaking is on. Take that off, take that off. Um, so there we go, that's my uh initial faults on the atomos ninja 5 um 
I'm loving it, really enjoying using it. I've, as I say, I've only had it a few days, but even then I'm still really, really enjoying using it. So um, I do hope, oh, let's get rid of that. I do hope you find my reviews uh, useful and you do find this channel useful. Um, just to let you all know, a lot of people do ask me, what kit do I use for filming these reviews? And it varies depending on um, what I've got and what I want to use. But my close-up camera is film being filmed on my Fuji X-T3 with its, uh, I think it's the 80mm, 60mm 60 um, uh, lens. And that's going straight into my uh, Atomos Shogun. Um, the wide camera is being filmed on my Sony uh, FDR-AX700 camcorder, FDR-AX700, that's the wide shot. The close-up shot of all this gubbins, you know, me, uh, the Atomos Ninja 5, this camera here, um, is the Sony FDR-AX53. It's a tiny little camcorder, uh, but it's, I, I really like it. And then the camera that this one is, um, that's being well, it's connected to the Atomos Ninja 5 is my Fuji X-T2 with the 10 to 24 wide angle lens on. Um, so this one here is uh, connected to the Atomos Ninja 5 and I've got me Tascam DR70 uh, on top of that picking up the audio and I can see the needles are moving quite nicely so the audio should be really good. So that's pretty much the Atomos Ninja 5. Um, I'm extremely delighted with it. Um, I can't think what else, uh, well, there's lots more I could say about it. Um, oh yeah, I will actually just cover the, what you're seeing, uh, when you're mucking around with the display settings, that, that isn't being baked onto the actual recording. So your recording is always clean. You don't get anything that you're mucking around with, but you can put um, LUTs on here. So if you're filming, in uh, like Sony S-Log or Canon C-Log, or in this case, Fuji F-Log, uh, which is a, a form that has a very wide dynamic range. This, you can actually set a lot on here, so it monitors it like this, but the actual recording has got that wide dynamic range. Now this monitor, one of the big selling points for this monitor is that it's got a, a 10, uh, not 10 bit, um, yeah, 10 stops of dynamic range. So you can actually, um, it's a really yucky looking image actually, but on this monitor, you can bring the shadows uh, up and bring the highlights down and to have a really nice looking image. So you get an idea of what that will look like in, uh, in post once you grade it and you edit it, but it doesn't bake that on the actual recording. So you get a really clean recording, but as a cameraman, you're able to monitor it as how it would look, pretty much how it would look once it's graded. And that is great for camera people because I've seen, you know, when I've played with S-Log, when I had the Sonys, I haven't played with the F-Log on these, it's a really pain in the butt because you're looking at a gray image on the back of the actual screen, a gray overexposed image. When, in fact, this monitor will not show it as a gray overexposed image. It will show it as it will look like, you know. Um, so, yeah. Great, great piece of kit. So I'm loving the Atomos Ninja 5 and all the Atomos products. So there we go. I do hope you find this channel useful, as I was saying um, earlier before I brought that bit up. But yeah, I enjoy making these videos and you know they're great fun to do. But your support is really important to my channel and important to me. So if you do find this useful, please hit the, the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, will you please subscribe and tell all your friends? It would be really, well, I would be really appreciative of that. So thanks very much for watching and enjoy this channel and keep your eyes out for the next, uh, the next video coming up. Cheers, thanks very much. Bye for now.